and today we're going to be going over the JDAM and how to use it. Uh, as is with all my videos, it's going to be very simple, quick, and to the point. So, first things first, master arm on. We're going to go and put the weapon system into air to ground mode, A-G. On the left MFD, you're going to have your ground radar. On the right MFD, your SMS page. If you've already got your JDAMs aligned, it'll show RDY and power on. I've found that if you align them on the ground versus in the air, I personally have not seen any difference in behavior or accuracy. Um, but I would assume in real life that it probably would be best to align them on the ground. Uh, but in the sim, in DCS, I've not really found much of a difference between aligning them while on the ground or aligning them in the air. To align it, uh, just power it on and it'll automatically align. So if this says PWR, off, just hit the button next to it to power it on and it'll start aligning itself. It'll say A10, 09, A, and it'll start to count down until it says RDY. Ready. Once you have RDY here, you're ready to go. If you don't have your uh, JDAM selected, if you're not seeing any of this, it's probably because you have a different weapon selected. Hit the button next to the weapon and cycle through all the weapons you have select, or, uh, loaded on the jet until you have your GBU-38s. Or 31, so you'll have GB38 or GB31. I have the 31 V3s. They have the uh, penetrator package on them, so they're designed to go into a hardened shelter, go through several feet of reinforced concrete, and then detonate inside the bunker. You don't want to detonate on the surface; it doesn't do anything. You need to get it inside the bunker and then blow it up. Uh, so use penetrators. If you use just the V1, the 31 V1, uh, it's just like a, uh, the 38 and the 31 is like a Mark 82, Mark 84, but with a GPS guidance package attached to it uh, with little fins and everything so that it can actually guide itself and it's a fire and forget weapon. So as soon as you drop, you can fly away. You don't need to keep um, a, a laser on the target or you don't need to uh, keep anything locked with your TGP, your targeting pod. If you've set it up correctly, as soon as you release the bomb, you can fly away. You don't need to be there anymore. It'll guide itself to the target. So you have two uh, options, pre-brief or visual mode. Uh, this is just like with the Maverick or anything else that has pre-brief or visual mode. Same concept. Visual mode, you have your square on your flight path marker. You can use your RDR cursor switch to move that square around. Put it on a target, team is switched, target management switch up, and that'll lock it in place onto that target. So I'm gonna team a switch down to reset it, and it'll go right back to my flight path marker. RDR cursor switch, and I'll just pick one of these little buildings right here, and team a switch up, and it's locked in place. And you can see it's not moving, it's staying on that target. And that information is already being passed over to the computer on the JDAM. JDAM will uh, uh, hit that target as long as you release it with enough velocity and altitude to get it there. So to do that, just like your Mavericks or your AIM 120s, you've got the same kind of symbology here, this, this open bracket and a carrot. This carrot is slowly making its way down to this bracket. Once this carrot is within this bracket, uh, you can drop your JDAM and it's uh, gonna hit the target. It's gonna guide itself there. I have found that if I wait too long and this carrot gets all the way to the bottom half of this bracket, that sometimes it'll hit the target, sometimes it won't. So I try to release the JDAM at the top half of this bracket to get the most accuracy and the most success. Um, again, there is no guaranteed spot, um, but mostly guaranteed hit if you release in the top half of the bracket. All right. As the carrot comes down, you're going to notice that the release cue is also coming down. The release cue is going to hit your uh, flight path marker at the same time the carrot hits the top of the bracket. And now I can release. And that is to hit the target down here that I selected previously, which isn't the target I want. All right, so team is switched down to reset that. Square goes back up here to the flight path marker. We're going to go back to pre-brief mode because I prefer that. We're going to be using the targeting pods. We're going to go over to your left MFD. Select one of these that you don't need. So Flickus, we don't even have a Flickus yet. Soon, hopefully. Hit it again, and you can select any of these pages that you would 
prefer to have. So in this case, we want the targeting pod, TGP. So now we can see our targeting pod. It is not soy, this is not your sensor of interest. We want it to be so that we can use the targeting pod right now. So I'm trying to slew it around and it's not doing anything. RDR cursor switch up, down, left, right. Nothing's happening because it is not soy. So display management switch down or Demus switch down. And now you have a white box around this MFD. This is now your sensor of interest and you can control it. So now I can use my RDR cursor switch, left, down, right, move it around, slew the camera around. Target management switch up to put it into point track. Target management switch left to go into white hot, left again to go to black hot, left again to get back to TV mode. Clockwise and counterclockwise, uh, uh, zoom knob to zoom in and out and target management switch down to reset the uh, uh, targeting pod to look at the waypoint that you have uh, selected. We're going to get a little closer to the target area so that we can see the target and then we'll get started with pre-brief mode. Alright, we can see the target now. Uh, we are going to be blowing up this uh, factory here with a 2,000 pound Penetrator JDAM. We're also going to be blowing up this command center, which is also going to be a test of the new update. We've got, uh, they've adjusted the damage model of the command center, the bunker, to allow us to blow these things up with just one penetrator. I'm hopeful that they'll uh, add this uh, adjustment to the ammo bunkers as well, um, but we'll see. We're going to select a target. We're going to use the uh, cursor to select the uh, command center first. And we're going to set up our uh, JDAM. So, up here at the top right, control. And this is going to change the JDAM uh, parameters and settings uh, and how we want it to impact the target and what we want it to do once it impacts. We have four profiles set up to four of them. Uh, so I can set number four to ground fusing and one to uh, ground delay and two to air. So now if I go to four, it's still ground, one ground delay, to air. So you can set up to four profiles. Next option is your arm delay. How many seconds after the bomb has been released from the jet that it arms itself. We don't want it blowing up on the wing when we release it, uh, so we give it some time uh, to separate itself from the jet before it arms itself so that we don't have any inadvertent detonations. The default's four seconds. I've never changed it and it's worked fine for me. You're fusing down here. Ground, ground delay, air. This is your air burst. I don't think we have that yet. Ground, if you set this to ground on a regular JDAM uh, V1, this is what you'll set it to. It'll blow up as soon as it impacts the target. Um, and the fuse delay does nothing for a regular uh, V1 or uh, GBU-38. For the GBU-31s, we can change the fuse delay on this ground to give it time after it impacts the target before we want it to detonate. So at 700 knots impact of velocity, hitting reinforced concrete, 15 milliseconds later, we can have it detonate. So I set this to like 45 milliseconds, so it hits the concrete, buries through it, goes into the bunker, and then detonates 45 milliseconds later. What I have found, though, in my testing, is any of these does not work. And I don't know if it's a bug or if it just hasn't been modeled yet, but if we set this to any other delay other than zero, it will not detonate an, uh, inside of a bunker. Um, I've thrown eight 2,000 pound JDAM penetrators at an ammo bunker with all manner of different fuse delays and none of them worked. And I finally had them blow up at like eight of them. Uh, but if you set them to zero milliseconds, two. Every time, two JDAMs, ammo bunkers, done. One JDAM, 2,000 pounder uh, penetrator and the command center is done with zero, second, uh, zero milliseconds. So just leave it at zero for now until they change that and fix that. Ground delay hits the ground, fuse delay is in hours, so 0.25 hours is 15 minutes, half an hour, you know. So we're gonna go to ground, and we're gonna do a fuse delay of zero milliseconds. Impact angle in degrees, 60 degrees. Impact angle uh, azimuth in degrees, zero degrees. Impact velocity in knots, so we're gonna have it set, uh, set to impact at 700 knots. Once you have all this set, we hit the control button at the top here, and now we can see we have the uh, profile one configuration set. Down here, we can set which station we want to drop from. So, drop from station three, which is the JDAM over here, or station seven, JDAM over here. 
Alright, so we have the target selected down here, the command bunker. We're going to fly the jet until we're pointed at the target. Target's right over there. And there we go. Now we're going to wait for this carrot to get within the bracket. This carrot's going to follow the uh, release cue. The release cue, once it hits your flight path marker, you're good to go. You can drop the JDAM. The difference between the JDAM and uh, a laser guided bomb is a laser guided bomb you have to drop, you have to be holding the release button right now so that when the release cue hits the flight path marker, it releases on time. With a JDAM, because it can guide itself and it has um, the capability of doing so, you can drop as long as you're within this bracket. Now, I like to drop as long as I'm at the top half of that bracket. So we're going to go ahead and release now. And we'll go around. And impact. All right. Shack 1 Command Center. Next, we're going to do visual mode on the factory right there. So, we're going to put the JDAM into Viz mode, hit the button right above Pre, switch it to Viz, and now we have the square on our flight path marker. And use your RDR cursor switch to move the square around. Once you have it on the target, team is switch up, and you're good to go. Make sure you fly the jet so that you're lined up and then drop as long as the carrot's within the bracket. Another way to use Viz mode is once you have the square on your flight path marker, you want to get the asterisk on the top left of your HUD to appear. So to do that, uh, DEMA switch up until you see the asterisk. You can see it there on the top left. Once you have the asterisk there, it means your HUD is soy, and you can use visual mode with the HUD by moving with the RDR cursor switch the square around, or Press and hold team switch up for about two seconds, and then let go, and you'll get a square over your uh, helmet mounted queuing system uh, crosshairs. Once you have that, put your crosshairs on the target that you want, and hit team switch up, and that'll lock it in place. You can use RDR cursor switch to move it around until you have the target selected properly, and then you can drop your JDAMs in the same way you would uh, with using your HUD. Alright, and I'm going to do a little bit of adjustment here. There we go. Looks good. And the carrot is in the top half. I'm going to go ahead and drop that JDAM and we can fly away. And shack one factory. And that's it. I hope this helps.